Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your hour. Hi guys. Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You Music Edition Episode 3. If you remember from uh, the last episode, we built ourselves a kick pedal um, out of cardboard and other bits. Uh, we didn't have time to show you exactly how I made that in the last episode, so here's a quick recap. Today we're going to be learning about how to play some simple rhythms on the drum kit that you've made. So just a recap for what the drum parts are. This one here is a hi-hat. This one here is the snare. This one here is the tom. This one here, that's the kick. And that one down there is the floor tom. Okay, so what we're focusing on today, if you can count to four, then you can play drums. So this is the sequence. So this is the order that you have to do things in to get the first drum beat. So on number one, you have to hit the kick and the hi-hat at the same time, like that. Number two, you have to just hit the hi-hat on its own. Number three, you have to hit the snare and the hi-hat together. And then number four, you just hit the hi-hat on its own again. So, when you're counting in your head, it should sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now that we have that basic rhythm, so one, two, three, four, we can start adding in things called fills, which is when you go one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, like that. So in order to keep those in time, you need to get them on the right number, okay? So you play the four that we know, one, two, three, four, then one, two, like that. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we play it nice and slow, and then as you get better, you can speed up. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two. And just keep on practicing that 
and eventually you can speed up and get faster and faster. Next time, we'll be learning a few more different feels and a couple of different things called time signatures, which is where it's not just one, two, three, four, but you count to three, like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, things like that. So we'll go into that in more detail in episode four. Thanks a lot, bye. Another exciting episode of Word of the Day. I'm Miss Moesha. And I'm Miss Kylie. Today's Word of the Day is? Achena. Meaning mine or my. Achena and Gwen. And Gwen. Holding the ball. Ona. Make sure and practice saying Achena, meaning mine or my. And make sure you tune in tomorrow on ICTV. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Chen. A chenna. This week, we are looking at the language of time. Now, time is measured in two different ways. One way is called analog. That's with the clock that has a face and a long and a shorthand. Can you spell analog with me? A N A L O G U E. Analog. Now, the second way we read time is digital. That's like the time we see on our phones. Digital time is run by little computers. Can you spell the word digital with me? D I G I T A L. Digital. Good morning, Mr. Mark. Can I ask you one quick question? Certainly. How many hours in one day? 24. Is that correct, Mr. Daniel? Sure is, Mr. Mark. Thank you very much, Mr. We measure time in hours, also shown by the shorthand on our analog clocks. There are 24 hours in one day. Let's spell it. H O U R. Hour. Good morning, Miss Robin. Morning. I'll just ask you one quick question. How many minutes in one hour? 60. Is that correct, Mr. Daniel? Sure is, Mr. Mark. Thank you very much. Cheers, Miss Robin. Thank you. We also you. measure time in minutes, which can be found on the right-hand side of digital clocks or the long hand on analog clocks. There are 60 minutes in one hour. Let's spell it. M-I-N-U-T-E. Good morning, Miss Lisa. Good morning, Mr. Mark. Can I ask you one question? Sure. How many seconds in one minute? Hmm, one minute. There's 60 seconds in one minute. Is that correct, Mr. Daniel? That sure is, Mr. Mark. Thank you very much, Miss Lisa. You're welcome. That we measure time is through things called seconds. Seconds are the smallest measure of time. There's 60 seconds in one minute. Let's spell it. S E C O N D. When someone said it is one o'clock, we don't know if they're talking about when it is dark outside or when it is light. That is why we say 1 a.m., which means that it's dark outside. If it was 1 p.m., the sun would still be out. When we are talking about time, we may use the words a.m. and p.m. This helps us to know if we're talking about 
daytime or nighttime. Now, AM means sometime in the early morning. AM can stand for after midnight to help you to remember. When we use the phrase PM, we are talking about in the afternoon or the evening. PM stands for post midday or after right, midday. Now we have looked at reading clocks and how knowing what each number means can help us in understanding time. That will make you more comfortable telling time whether it is analog or digital or on our phones. Hi everyone, this is Miss Deb. Hi everyone, this is Miss Andrea. Hi everyone, Miss Fleia. Hi, it's Miss Emily. And Miss Katie. Good afternoon, Urara, and welcome to Wednesday. I really enjoyed that time out with Elsa digging for witchetty grubs. It really was fun. As I was thinking about it last night, I decided I'm going to write to my friend Sally in America. Now Sally has visited me a few times here in Australia and she really likes going bush. And I'm sure she'd be interested to know what is the procedure for collecting witchetty grubs. Our aim is to search for witchetty grubs. What materials did we need? A digging stick and a bowl. What steps did we take? Firstly, we had to search for a good witchetty bush. Secondly, when we found the bush, we carefully dug around the roots to find the grubs. And then, when we had found them, we slowly and gently pulled each one from the root. Afterwards, we put them all in our bowl to take home. When we write a procedure, it is really important that we put everything in the correct order, otherwise things could go wrong. Here we will show you what can happen if the procedure is wrong. Miss Emily wanted to make Miss Fleur a cup of tea. So she took a cup out of the cupboard. and filled it with water. Then she put the tea bag in the water. Miss Emily knows that Miss Fleur likes her tea sweet. Okay, time to stir. Here's Miss Fleur now. That's disgusting! Please, Emily, let me show you the right way to make a cup of tea. Firstly, you grab your tea bag and put it in the cup. Secondly, you fill the cup with hot water. Next, you put the milk in. Then, you can take out your tea bag. I do like my tea sweet, but with sugar, not with salt, Emily. And lastly, stir your tea. Mmm, lovely. Good afternoon and welcome to another half lesson with Mr. Zane and with Mr. Liko. Last lesson we began to look at different parts of our well-being. We also introduced our Urara College well-being model for us to understand well-being a little bit better. Just to remind you, well-being is the way we think, the way we look, the way we behave and the way we feel. 
During this lesson, we will show you some short clips of different examples that show some of the choices that you, our students, make at Yarrara College on a daily basis. These could be both good and bad choices or short-term and long-term choices. Once again, the message for today's lesson is that being healthy is more than just having a fit body. It is in the choices that we make every day that help us to live healthier lifestyles. While you are watching some of these short clips, we encourage you to look at some of the choices that you would normally make here at Yarrara College. Think about the different people that influence you to make these choices. And also think about what happens after you make this choice. How might these choices affect your well-being? Will it be in a good way or a bad way? Check this out. All right, guys, let's go. I put some worksheets on your table. If you just take a seat, flip over to page two. How was lunch? Good. So as you can see, it's just calculating change. Um, you guys did this yesterday. You can work together. If you need any help, just let me know. Buddy! Buddy! Come on, let's go, brother. Come on. Buddy, come on, let's go. Don't worry about him, buddy. Don't worry about Jordan. We're meant to be working together. As we pause the video here, Buddy has to make a choice. What do you think that choice is? I want you to think about the different people who are influencing Buddy and more importantly, what are they trying to influence Buddy into doing? Let's watch the video to see what choice Buddy makes. Can you help me with this one? Um, yep. As you can see, Buddy listened to his friend Renisha and made the choice of staying in class and finishing his work. Now let's take a look at the other choice Buddy can make and think about whether this is a good choice Buddy is making or not. Can you help me with this one? Uh, I'm gonna go to Jordan. In this second scenario, Buddy and his class have just been dismissed from chapel and are making their way to their next class. Let's take a look and see what choice Buddy has to make this time. All right, Mac Leap first up, guys. Come on. Where's Jordan? I don't know. I don't know, miss. Buddy, come on. Let's go. As we pause the video, Jordan has just told Buddy to run around the school with him. Buddy has a choice to make. Go to class with his friend Renisha, or go and run around the school with Jordan. Think about the different people who are trying to influence Buddy, and if they are a positive or a negative influence on Buddy. Let's continue watching to see what choice Buddy makes. Buddy, come on. Don't worry about Jordan. Come on, we've got to go to class. Come. Come on. Let's go class. It's good to see Buddy doing the right thing, making the right choices, and staying in class. Keep up the good work, Buddy. Next lesson, we'll continue to look at choices, but we'll move our focus into the choices you make every day back in community. We encourage you to continue to think about the choices you make every day and the impact it has on your well-being. Stay tuned. G'day, it's Dan from Clontarf here, and now it's time for some footy maths. Some of you might be surprised to think that maths is important in footy, but quite often in local footy, we'll look up at the scoreboard and we'll see something like that. Now this can be confusing for some people as to which team is in front. Elliot have kicked one more goal than Ali Karung, but Ali Karung 
kick several more points. Because I know my six times table, I can quickly look at that and tell you that no one is in front and in fact scores are level. How did I work this out? I worked this out because I learnt my six times tables when I was in school. And you'll see how it matches up. Three goals equals 18 points. Three times six equals 18. We can go a little bit further down and seven goals equals 42 points because seven times six is 42. Let's have a look at an example from one of my least favorite games of footy, the 1978 SANFL Grand Final between Sturt and Norwood. An incredible scoreline here. It's not often you see a team kick 26 points amongst 40 scoring shots, but that's what Sturt did on the day. Let's add up the scores. We'll start with Sturt's 14 goals, each one worth six points. Six fours are 24. Carry the two, six ones are six, plus the two we carried, 84 there. And then we'll add their 26 points. Six and four is 10, carry one. Two and eight is 10, plus the one we carried, 11. Sturt's final score, 110. Norwood, 16 goals, 15. Let's do their goals, each worth six points. Six sixes are 36, carry the three. Six ones are six, plus the three we carried, that's nine. Let's add their 15 points, six and five is 11. Carry one, nine and one is 10, plus the one we carried, 111. That's why it's my least favorite game of football. I back for Sturt, and they lost the grand final to Norwood by one point in 1978. Now, another example with quite an incredible scoreline once again. This is from 1988, NTFL Club St Mary's kicked their record score against Waratahs. 44 goals, 28. This match featured the one and only Sil Rioli. No, not the Hawthorne superstar, the Clontarf superstar at Gerrara College. Our Sil Rioli played in this game. Let's add it up. 44 goals, times by six points each. Six fours are 24. Carry the two, six fours are 24, plus the two we carried, 26. And now we'll add their 28 points to that. Eight and four is 12, we'll carry one. Six and two is eight. Let's carry the one makes it nine. And two plus nothing is two. 292 points. A massive score by St Mary's and well done Cyril Rioli. So there you go, footy maths. Good morning. Welcome back to Urara.